Let's talk about bone marrow transplants, or as they're more commonly known now, hematopoietic stem cell transplants. So in this instance, an individual or a recipient, as you can see here, needs a new immune system. Why? It could be for a number of reasons. So individuals require a um, bone marrow transplant or hematopoietic stem cell transplant um, could be because this individual has something wrong with their immune system. Uh, maybe they suffer from a severe immunodeficiency that is genetically related. So something like SCID, severe combined immunodeficiency, or some other defect in their immune system. They need a new one. Theirs is no good. So somebody who suffers from an immunodeficiency, somebody who suffers from a hematopoietic cancer, a number of B-cell lymphomas, T-cell lymphomas, leukemias, um, these would be... Uh, disorders where you would require a new immune system. This immune system is not good. We need to destroy it. We need a new one. Um, could be even in some autoimmune disorders where someone's immune system is hyperactive against their own cells. Those are some instances where somebody requires a new immune system. So uh, how do we get a new immune system? Um, well, uh, first, we need to destroy this individual's um, current immune system. So individuals undergoing a hematopoietic stem cell transplant first undergo myoablative therapy, which uses very harsh chemotherapy as well as radiation to destroy the bone marrow cells or the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells in this individual. Uh, and when this is done, this individual is highly susceptible to infection. So usually these individuals are isolated in units in the hospital um, where they are not exposed to any pathogens because once this myoblative therapy um, is complete, this individual has no immune system, no B cells, no T cells, um, no monocytes, no neutrophils. Um, so this individual is highly susceptible to infection. But we needed to destroy their immune system before we can replenish it with a new immune system. So after the myoablative therapy, uh, comes the donor's immune system, specifically uh, an individual's hematopoietic stem cells. So uh, what is going to occur here? Well, first of all, we need to find a match in terms of HLA matching. So uh, again, as we talked about um, when we talk about tr tissue transplantation, the, the uh, number of HLA matches between the donor and the recipient needs to be high in order to prevent rejection, in order to pre prevent other complications between the donor cells and the recipient cells. And there's something called the graft versus host disease, where um, the donor's immune cells could attack the recipient cells. So this is all minimized if we can get the uh, identical, number, uh, identical matching between the donor's HLA and the recipient HLAs, which is why sometimes we look for family members uh, to be donors because they are more likely to have identical HLAs. So if a donor has been found um, who has uh, a high number of HLA alleles that match the recipient, then we need to harvest um, the stem cells from this individual. Now, bone marrow transplants used to be performed um, using needles to go into the bone and suck out the uh, red marrow um, from bones. Uh, that was a very painful procedure. But now scientists uh, have figured out that they can harvest these pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells from the bloodstream. So uh, these cells, these stem cells that we talk about living in your bone marrow that give rise to all of your white blood cells, all leukocytes, as well as your red blood cells and your platelets, um, these uh, stem cells actually up here also circulating in the bloodstream. Uh, why do they leave the bone marrow and travel around? That's a great question. I'm not sure I know, and I'm not sure anybody knows. But these stem cells, which we think about living in your bone marrow, also seem to appear at some level circulating in your bloodstream. And scientists also know that these stem cells have a protein on their surface called CD34. So cells that have CD34 on their surface that are in your bloodstream uh, seem to be hematopoietic stem cells. So these can be captured selectively. So now in a bone marrow transplant, the donor doesn't have to have needles injected into their bone and have their marrow extracted. 
all they need to do is have some blood removed and that blood is filtered and any CD34 cells containing cells are removed from the bloodstream and then that blood is put back in that person and the donor still has their own bone marrow and now they've donated some of these CD34 positive cells to the recipient and these are stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells. So it's very easy to donate um, bone marrow nowadays because we don't have to go in with a needle. We can just extract these cells from the blood uh, using do from uh, blood of donors. So that's great. So now this individual's uh, CD34 positive stem cells are injected into the recipient. The recipient has no uh, stem cells uh, themselves. So these pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells um, home to the bone marrow, which uh, is now empty, and they start to grow and colonize um, the um, spongy bone areas where the bone marrow, the red marrow, lives. And this is called engraftment. And so after a few weeks, this ind individual starts to produce um, their own immune cells from the donors. So macrophages, neutrophils, dendritic cells, B cells, T cells, um, red blood cells, platelets, all of those uh, cells need to be remade uh, and they're made using the donor's hematopoietic stem cells. So this is called engraftment. When the donor's stem cells uh, start to colonize the compartments in the bone of the recipient. Uh, this kind of transplant is known as an allogenic transplant because we are receiving, the recipient is receiving the cells from another person. There's going to be a different type of bone marrow transplant we'll see in the next slide. Um, Oh, let's go to the next slide. So uh, in um, certain types of uh, blood disorders, leukemias and lymphomas, it's actually advantageous and possible to get an autologous uh, bone marrow transplant or an autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplant. The advantage here is that these cells come from the recipient themselves. So you can donate hematopoietic stem cells to yourself. Um, what's the advantage here? The advantage is the HLI matches are going to be perfect because they're your cells. Um, why can some people donate stem cells to themselves and not other people? It has to do with where the mutations that are leading to the autoimmune disorder or the uh, immunodeficiency or the cancer, where are those mutations? Are those mutations high up in the uh, chain of stem cell or are they lower in the... Um, in the chain of cell differentiation. So if they're lower, if they if these mutations, for example, that give rise to leukemia or lymphomas, if these mutations are sort of downstream of differentiated cells, then it is possible that the, this person's stem cells are perfectly fine. So what can happen is these individuals can give them uh, give their own immune cells uh, and put them in the freezer. So this individual would be hooked up to a um, machine and their CD4, CD34 hematopoietic stem cells extracted from their bloodstream and hopefully there are no mutant cells in this population, there are no cancer cells in this population, hopefully. It's not perfect, but uh, um, it's pretty good. So these cells are removed from the patient and they're frozen. Then the patient undergoes that myoblative therapy to have all of their immune cells destroyed. Uh, once they have their immune cells destroyed, they will be injected with their own CD34 positive pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells, which will hopefully divide, differentiate, and repopulate the individual's immune system. So they'll make leukocytes, they'll make erythrocytes, and they'll make platelets. And hopefully this uh, repopulation gives rise to good immune cells, good red blood cells, good platelets. Um, so the advantage of an autologous transplant, it's a perfect match. So you're not going to have to worry about rejection of the cells. You're not going to have to worry about graft versus host disease, where the, um, the hematopoietic stem cells might attack the body. 
Um, the only, uh, the, the major downside of an autologous transplant, though, is the risk of relapse. So it is possible when um, filtering out these hematopoietic stem cells from the bloodstream that a few cancer cells get in there and get frozen down, and then the cancer cells are injected back into you. So that's not going to help you get rid of the cancer. Uh, it's also possible that some of these stem cells have a mutation in them, and so you're re-injecting the uh, originating cancer cells back into the body. Again, that's not uh, ideal. But for some individuals, the autologous transplant is successful, and then individuals do not have to worry about transplant rejection.